Good evening, everyone. It looks like the waiting room is slowing down and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Carrie Geiger, your principal. And here with me, I have Dr. Linda Hayes, our director, Dr. Ashley Pennypacker Hill, our director of student and family services, Christy Gabbard, our director of program development and outreach, and Julie Henderson, our communications person who you hear a lot of messages from lately. So thank you um, to all of them, my leadership team for being here with me tonight as well. We are going to talk to you about some information that will be helpful moving into second semester. So first of all, how did we get here? A little history. Uh, who do we have to thank for this wonderful new space that we're going to begin enjoying with students tomorrow? Some more campus moves and continued construction that will be underway as we finish out the school year. What the first day on campus is gonna look like tomorrow. A few really important reminders about keeping ourselves uh, healthy and nourished. And then we'll open it up for some questions and answers. And if you look at the bottom of your screen, you should see a little Q&A. And that's where you can drop in your questions and we'll do our best to make sure that everyone's questions are addressed. We're going to, um, we're going to dedicate an hour tonight. So if we don't get time to answer all of your questions by 7.30, we'll make sure to try to publish those answers through some communications. Julie, you're muted. So Julie's gonna talk to us about um, some photos. Go ahead, Julie. So, I know that a lot of people are really excited about seeing inside the building and I'm trying my best to publish photographs as we go. Um, for those of you who don't know, on every page on the website, you'll see this, these bunch of icons with the calendar and the one that says inside PK that links you to a Flickr site where we have um, an archive of photography. One of the albums is called New Secondary Building. And if you click on that New Secondary Building folder, uh, you'll see a whole bunch of photographs like this and we'll keep adding as we go along throughout the day tomorrow when uh, we'll have students and faculty in those spaces. So keep your eyes peeled. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Julie. And now we're going to turn it over to Dr. Hayes and she's going to talk to us about uh, the design team and more information about the construction of the building. Um, and I think it's mostly to um, share with you all that this has been a journey to get to this point tomorrow and we're really excited to finally be here. So in 2007, our campus went through a campus master planning process and at that point in 2007, we received approval from the Florida Department of Education um, that they concurred that it would be more cost effective to replace rather than to repair and renovate our 1957 buildings. Um, and that was the beginning of a, a long, long journey of revitalizing our campus. After the master plan was approved, then we worked in 2009 with Prakash Nair, who's an architect with Fielding Nair International. And they're a very well-known um, group that works with K-12 educators and higher education educators um, across the country and all over the world in um, really rethinking how we bring learners together in brick and mortar. And so as we went through that conceptual design process with Prakash Nair, we identified some design goals that carried us through uh, the design and construction of this building. And um, you can also see that there are features here that are reflected in our elementary building. So one of the primary goals in the campus revitalization plan was to reduce our carbon and physical footprint which is part of why we see our buildings going up um, and taking less of the green space around our buildings and actually releasing more green space back to our students and our, and our faculty. Um, the other goal was to really maximize available resources for the next 50 years. Um, so everything about the architectural design in the elementary building and in this new secondary building is to think about every, how every square inch that is constructed can support the learning mission of the school. So we've reduced corridors and um, taken them out of sitting empty all day and have incorporated them into the learning spaces. And it certainly contributes to the beauty of this new building. 
And then the goals are to support and inspire learning, creativity, collaboration, and communication for all of our stakeholders, for our students, for our faculty, um, for others that we work with and with our families, that those elements are incorporated in the design throughout this building, um, throughout our elementary building, and for the buildings um, yet to come. And if you're interested in learning a lot more, there's tons of information. Julie's done a great job archiving information on our website um, to help those who are interested to know more about this process and where we are. And that's the um, three story. So in the, there is a learning common space on the first floor and it's very carefully sound engineered. So even though there's three stories of space there, the sound doesn't bounce around and it's really a lovely space um, that will provide opportunities for students to study, um, to collaborate with others, um, for our faculty to come together and for us to work with others who are interested in learning more about our school. So it'll be a great multi-purpose space. So once we had a conceptual design with Prakash Nair, the next step was to employ an architect to prepare the construction drawings for this building. Um, and those construction, prop, those construction drawings began in 2013. And we worked with Brooke Sherard, Sherard from Schinkel Schultz. And when Brooke showed up on our campus in 2013, um, this was long after we picked Schinkel Schultz as our architectural design team, he very proudly announced, you know, I went to school here and my mom taught here for a little while. So it's always fascinating to me how there's so many roads that lead back to PK Young. Um, so Brooke led the way in the final design plan for this, the construction of this building. The interior design team was Ramsky, Ramsky and Company and Jennifer Ramsky, who's the principal owner of the interior design team is also a PK alum. So just for the good of the order, she was a lifer of PK Young and she was the daughter of the first lifer who was the first student to ever graduate from PK Young in 1935. So she has a real claim to fame there. So she gets what PK is about um, and she helped to find ways to incorporate um, our school community and the blue wave spirit um, in and throughout the building. And then the construction team is Parrish McCall, and they've done a great job persevering and helping us uh, be ready to bring our students back into this, to bring our students into the building for the first time tomorrow morning. Uh, so they've been busting their tails, making up time that got lost along the way as COVID certainly had an impact on various subcontractors along the way. And then the furnishings that have been um, selected, purchased, and installed in this building um, were designed, were um, identified by a faculty committee, our PK Young Learning Environment Design Committee, and they worked with Marie Brown, UF Interior Designer, and Buffy Montgomery, who's the OEC um, Furniture Supplier. Um, so together, this team brought this building to life and, and got us to the point where we're ready to open tomorrow. Funding um, was essential to getting this project going. And so it really began with the bottom of the list, which were some um, very um, invested and supportive PK alums who gave very generously. And soon um, we will recognize their contributions um, per their wishes uh, in various ways throughout the building. So I will be forever grateful to those alums who made significant cap capital donations um, to help us put together the funding to make this construction possible. And multiple meetings with, uh, with the provost um, also resulted in support to get this construction project going. And we would not be here today if it weren't for Maury Husseini, the current chair of the UF Board of Trustees, he spent two legislative sessions in Tallahassee uh, going door to door and making sure that PK Young was included in the final budget priorities um, and that it was supported and approved by the governor um, and had support throughout the legislature. So thanks to Maury um, for doing the really heavy lifting in Tallahassee on our behalf. We couldn't have found a better friend for PK Young than Maury. So though these um, pedals or waves hang over a circulation desk that we incorporated in that learning commons, um, and that will serve as a place for students to um, work with our librarian and check out books while we continue to wait for the possibility or plan ahead for the possibility of having a new library someday. 
Um, as is uh, consistent with any construction project at the University of Florida, uh, this building is aiming toward striving for gold lead certification. And it looks like we have all the points in place to be able to apply for that certification. So what does that mean in terms of construction? Well, it means things like our rooftop is white, so it'll reflect the heat. Uh, that we have an HVAC system, our heating and air is um, centrally controlled by UF and fluctuates and makes adjustments as needed as the building is occupied and unoccupied. It means that the lighting in this building is super sophisticated and programmed and um, responds to daylight and can be adjusted as needed by our teachers. It also means that um, the top outlets in many of our occupied rooms um, turn off when the room is not in use. And that's a current engineering practice at the University of Florida that got incorporated into the construction of this building. We'll also now be able to participate in UF's paper towel recycling program. Um, and even the appliances that were installed in this building were um, selected based on meeting LEED certification requirements. That is our new chemistry lab. And it's on the third floor. So the building is just about finished. Um, we'll continue to have to finalize some details and do the final, final parts and pieces to make everything um, finished and polished and perfect. Uh, so we will continue to occasionally host some subcontractors on our campus after the school day and so we can make sure everything in the building is working the way that it's intended. But the construction on our campus will continue um, and we are very fortunate that all of this has happened. Um, so there is uh, funding in the project to be able to that will enable us to remove all of the failing 1957 buildings that are on this campus and to pull out all the temporary buildings that were installed. Most of them were installed over 20 years ago. So it's time for them to go. Um, so the business office has already been relocated. They are now in what was previously the tech support office um, in Q building next to the gym. And then the tech support office moved to the other end of that same building. And Mr. Mathian, um, who was closest to the gym in that building is now in the center of that building in the old biology lab. And we're um, excited to have him move into that space um, as we continue to grow and build the um, digital design and uh, printing uh, kinds of course offerings that we uh, plan to provide for our students. The admissions office has also been relocated to Q building because they were she was also located in those old portables and uh, it can be accessed from the backside of Q building or from the entrance that is closest to the football field. Um, so soon, uh, actually starting today, they began installing silt fencing to protect our trees on campus um, as they and then they'll be um, soon installing const uh, some construction fencing to cord off the old part of H wing, um, which is where we've had a couple of middle school classes. And in the fall, early fall, we had some elementary classes back in there. Um, so the old part of H wing will be taken out. The music and the elementary music and art room will stay, of course. Um, the entire I wing where many middle school classes have been for several years now and all of those portables on north of there um, will all be removed over the next couple of months. And so you'll begin to see more and more green space open up on our campus, and we're really excited about that. Uh, this is a picture from the middle school engineering lab on the second floor. So once the um, or at the same time that the portables and H and I wing are being pulled out, um, they will also complete the construction of the new 6th Street entrance, and that will be open um, by the next school year, by the fall, fall of 2021 school year. So the work that's left to be done um, at that new entrance off of 6th Street is to install a wider sidewalk and a covered canopy so that when 6th through 12th grade students are dropped off in the circle, um, that is located up there off of 6th Street, they'll have a continuous path that's undercover if there were to be a rainy day. Um, they'll install some additional outdoor lighting for the evenings for safety reasons. Um, and there will be a new school sign 
installed on 6th Street, marking our new main entrance to the school. We, but for right now, for the rest of the school year, all of the parking and all of the drop-off activities will stay exactly as they have been for fall semester. There are no changes for this school year. This is just um, helping us get ready for next school year. The construction team is planning to um, demolish the old part of L wing, M wing and O wing. O wing are our oldest science labs. They're planning to demolish and haul those out during our spring break. Um, the removal of the old front office and we have a condemned building right behind it will take place in June. And June and July will be spent um, replacing our current main sidewalk and the old leaky canopies um, that we have over that main sidewalk and install new wider canopies um, across the campus. So we're excited uh, for this final transformation that will take place through the end of summer. So by next school year, we'll have new entrances and new parking routines, but we'll wait until later in the summer to communicate all the details to you. And this is a peek at one of the learning spaces inside our learning communities. The furnishings that were selected by our learning environment design team were intentionally um, chosen because of the flexibility, all the different ways that teachers can and learners can rearrange them to facilitate learning in the spaces. And I just walked through the entire building about an hour ago, and I noticed that teachers were really beginning to take on um, so many possibilities in thinking about how to arrange the new furnishings for their students tomorrow. Awesome, thank you, Linda. Perfect segue into what I need to talk about. So first day back on campus tomorrow. Um, I just wanna give you all a little picture of what it's gonna look like. So just as they have been all school year, if they've been coming to campus, um, students will be greeted and screened by members of our faculty and staff down in the par parking lot. Remember that uh, students who have younger siblings, elementary siblings, can be dropped off in the top circle, but we would love for every other secondary student to be dropped off in the south by the gym. Um, and then once they are screened by staff, meaning they're going to be asking them, do you have your Chromebook and charger? How are you feeling? Do you have a mask? They're going to be asking them several questions to make sure they're healthy and ready to learn. Um, after that, they're going to direct them to the cafeteria, and we have posted all the students uh, names alphabetically, grades six through 12, along with their first period teachers' names. And then a little before eight o'clock, all of those first period teachers are gonna be out on the lawn, either um, on the middle school cafeteria side or the high school new building courtyard side, and they're gonna have signs with their names and they're gonna meet up with their students so that we can have a staggered entrance into the building. Um, so they're going to meet with their teachers and then the, at a certain time, the teachers are going to bring their children, their students into the new building. Teachers who have classes outside of the new building will take their students directly to their classrooms. Um, then if you're an off campus student, we want you to feel the excitement of this first day in the new building as well. So we have some special things planned for them. So they're going to join their first period teacher zoom room based on the teacher's schedule. Um, we sent that out just a little while ago, I think around 435 o'clock. So check your email for that. It's also on our school announcements page on the website. It says exactly the teacher's name and what time that teacher is going to be opening their Zoom room for students in the morning. Um, for example, Mr. Bourne, his first period Zoom will open around 820 because he's coming into the building a little later than some of the other teachers. Um, Ms. C's, her Zoom room will open about 815, so we're staggering it. Uh, Senior Santiago, Senora Santiago, because she is not in the new building, her classroom is located elsewhere, her Zoom can start right at 8 o'clock. So they'll um, just open the Zoom room and begin right at 8 o'clock. Here's a list of all of those uh, first period teachers and the times. Again, that's on our website under announcements and it should be in your email. If we have the correct email in Skyward for you. 
So if you're not getting our emails, that's something we would love to remedy. Please uh, reach out and let us know. You can always check the announcements page too. And um, it's on Facebook. That's also been pushed out on our Facebook page. So we try, we try every which way we can to get you the information that you need. First day bell schedule is gonna be a little different. So what we are doing is extending first period so that the first period teachers can do a little bit of an orientation. They're going to take the students on a tour. They're going to cover a lot of norms and expectations for the way that we're going to interact with the space. So we've given first period a, a bigger chunk of time tomorrow. Um, and then they'll also have to cover the typical stuff that they would do on the first day of, of a new semester. So first period will be from eight to 1030. Rather than having five minute passing periods, we've extended that to 10 minutes tomorrow just to give students a little more opportunity to find their way around. And then you'll notice that lunch times are at a little um, different time tomorrow. Everything's gonna be a little different for this first Wednesday back in the building. Um, but something that has changed and will continue to change is our new Wednesday dismissal time is 1.35, five minutes later than it has been. That's because starting back on the 27th, next Wednesday, we're gonna be adding advisory back into our schedule and we needed an extra five minute passing on time to make advisory happen in the schedule. So new Wednesday dismissal time is five minutes later, 1.35. And again, Julie has this shared with you in email and it's on our announcements page if you're curious about tomorrow's first day schedule. And Dr. Geiger, you confirmed with families too that if students are not on campus, there are tour options for them online those media has been produced so that students will have an opportunity to look at the new building even though they're not here on campus so we're sort of trying to build that in for them uh, so they'll Absolutely. have that experience as well yeah so our counselors did a great job of a little gopro tour um, and those links will be provided by the first period teachers so if your child is in a teacher's uh, first period, the teacher will share that link during first period. And while the face-to-face -face students are taking the physical tour, the at-home students will be taking the GoPro tour with the school counselors. Another of our learning spaces. Yeah, these, so the teachers have now um, moved all this furniture around. It doesn't look like the little rows anymore. Uh, these, these pictures were taken before um, the teachers sort of started making their mark on the spaces. So I think everybody will be pleasantly surprised. So during first period tomorrow, all of the students will participate in these things. They're gonna see a welcome video. Teachers have some things to talk with them about before they go on tour. Then they're going to take a tour around the building on-campus students will actually be walking through the building with the teacher on a staggered schedule while off-campus students watch the video that I referred to earlier. Um, then they're gonna have some processing time and have a little conversation, engage in some questions and answers. And then um, on-campus students will receive a paper copy of their complete schedule while off-campus students can check their Skyward to see what their next Zoom location is. And then the first period teachers will talk about their class, um, orient the students to their class, like a first day syllabus review kind of thing um, that you would expect on the first day of a, of a new semester. And our water bottle filler stations. We're really excited about these. They're all throughout the building. So we're asking students to help us be environmentally friendly and also keep ourselves hydrated. Um, please have them bring their own water bottles to school. That's also really important because that is the only thing they're gonna be able to drink in the building. Um, we're asking that they not um, eat or drink other refreshments other than water in the learning spaces. Dr. Hayes didn't mention this in her presentation about the furnishings, but one of the design decisions was to provide carpeting in the building, and that is a, that is a sound design choice. Um, but because we have carpeting all throughout the building, um, having food and sugary beverages and things is just not compatible with that. So we wanna encourage everybody to eat a healthy breakfast before they come to school. 
Uh, this year, our cafeteria is providing a free breakfast for any student who wants one. They start serving at 7.30 in the morning and it looks delicious. Um, so please have your student either eat breakfast when they get here or eat breakfast before they come because they won't be allowed to eat inside the building. They can go out between classes and eat a snack outside, but they don't have a lot of time in that passing period. So um, we're encouraging them to eat a really healthy breakfast and then drink water and eat a healthy lunch. Lunch is also provided for free right now for any of our students. Um, again, bring your refillable water bottle and those water bottle filling stations are located all throughout the building. You saw in that picture that uh, Julie uh, showed before this slide, uh, we have covered the water fountain, the fountain parts with plastic bags. We're not using those due to COVID, but we are using the water bottle refills, um, parts of those water fountains. So please have your child bring a refillable water bottle. If you could label their name on it with a Sharpie, that would be even better. Dr. Geiger, if I can just give folks a reminder that if you, you do, you are like questions are popping for you, please write them in the, the Q&A um, here and we'll address them in just, a, in just a minute when we get onto that place. But please, if you do have questions, please don't hesitate to put them in that Q&A tab. This is another, this is one of our commons areas. We're calling them the commons. I believe this is third floor. Um, and then just some reminders. I know we have reminded you to death with this stuff, but it's really important that we all work together to keep each other as safe as possible, both our students, our faculty, our staff. Um, students are allowed to return to campus at any time now, um, and they can opt to do work or do school from home at any time now. We just need you to communicate with us. So it's really, really important that if you make a decision to make a change that we are notified because as you can imagine, we have to know which students are on our campus at any given time um, for safety purposes. And in case there's an emergency, we wanna be able to account for everyone. So your family knows what's best for your family and we wanna support that but we just need you to communicate with us and let us know if you decide to make a change. Um, we are going to do our best to keep everyone safe when they're on campus by maximizing our physical distancing as much as possible. As I mentioned earlier, teachers have been shifting furniture around and they're keeping in mind that we wanna keep students as physically distance, distanced as possible. Um, we're also always wearing masks and we check for masks when students are getting out of the car. We remind students all day long, we have extra masks. If a mask becomes uncomfortable or if a mask breaks, um, we have masks sprinkled all over the building and we're happy to provide those for students if they need them. So, you know, it's, it's okay, let your child know it's okay. If something goes wrong with your mask and you need to ask for another one, we're happy to provide that. Um, faculty have been, have been encouraged to maintain distance from the students. That's something that we as uh, teachers and educators have to really think about because we're used to being close to students. And um, so teachers are having to discipline themselves to do that for safety purposes. Um, I, want, I want Dr. Hayes to talk a little bit about our HVAC system because um, having a student myself, and I know uh, Christy Gabbard, Ashley Pennybecker Hill, we all have our own children who come to this school. And this is one of the things about this new building that makes us feel better about our kids being in a space like this. But I'll let Dr. Hayes talk about our HVAC system and the, the things that are in place to help support uh, keeping this building healthy. So we do have a state-of-the-art um, HVAC system, uh, the heating and air conditioning system. Um, and it also is helping us achieve that lead environmental design, um, reducing our carbon footprint um, kinds of uh, goals as well. Uh, we have been assured that it has ample air exchanges and it was already engineered long ago in the design plan to incorporate that UV lighting um, that is used in many hospitals, for example, to uh, 
kill the germs and viruses uh, through the air exchange. So we're very pleased to have that as a part of the construction of this building. Thank you, Dr. Hayes. Dr. Geiger, it might be helpful just here while we're on this page to remind folks, you mentioned about people um, being able, students being able to change whether they can be on campus or off and to really to communicate that. Um, and that would be by emailing main office at pky.ufl.edu. That's really a great go-to email, but that's the one uh, that will help us keep track of who's on campus and who's off. And let's say that your child is just not feeling well. Send an email to uh, Miss V is the one who usually answers main office. Let her know that as well. So my son isn't feeling feeling well. I'm going to keep him home today. It's not a permanent change, but I feel like to be safe, I want to keep my son at home um, just to, to monitor and make sure he's okay. Any, we would rather you over communicate with us than make us wonder like what's going on. The other thing you all have been fantastic about self-reporting when someone in a family is testing positive for COVID and you've done a wonderful job of letting us know and we're keeping our kids home because we were in contact with a cousin who was positive, whatever. You guys have done a wonderful job and thank you for that. It's really, I think, helped us keep our numbers low. As far as we know, we've had little to no spread at school. And I credit that all to our families and our faculty and staff just being super cautious about staying home when they're not well, um, self-reporting if they've been in contact with anyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And please continue that. That is That really and is, um, it says a lot about our community as a Blue Wave family. When you say self-report, Dr. Geiger, I'm understanding that any health-related concerns should be communicated directly with the nurse. Correct, um, nurse at PKY, yes. And her email is in the chat also. Perfect, yes, thank you, Julie. Ta-da, now we're at um, our question and answer time. Perfect, so I'm going to read the questions so they show up in the recording um, and then I might have different people answer different things because you know, I want Christy and Ashley to get to play too. Okay, the question is, is there a library located in the new middle high school building? Dr. Hayes, do you wanna talk about the design for the library space? So the, li the new library is a part of the campus master revitalization plan and it's included with the Global Media Cafe. Um, so we know that we don't have the funding right now to construct a new library. Um, this building took over the footprint of the previous library. So what we did do as a part of the design and installation of this new building is to incorporate um, as many of our library resources as we can in that learning commons on the first floor. And there is a library circulation desk on that first floor of the new building so that um, students can um, contact the librarian easily, can um, look up books and check them out. And then the other books that are um, a part of our um, collection uh, will be kept in stacks, uh, exact location to be determined as we continue sorting out all the moves we just went through on campus, um, but we'll have books accessible. accessible. Um, so we have two buildings left to build on campus. Uh, the replacing of the 1957 gymnasium and replacing our 1957 cafeteria and turning it into a um, global media center cafe. Um, so that's in the future. So that's how we're um, incorporating library books um, today for your students. Thank you. The next question is, how do I switch my classes? And since Dr. Pennypacker Hill sort of um, supervises the counseling, arm of PK Young. I'm going to let her answer that question. All right. Hi, everybody. So if you want to switch your classes, you talk with your school counselor. So for middle school, that would be Miss Schmidt is who you'd reach out to. You can send her a Canvas message, or you can go to the Counseling Canvas page, or you can go to Miss V in the front office, in the new front office at the, at the new building, and ask to see one of the counselors. And if they're available, they'll bring you back. And if not, then they'll send for you. And if you are in high school, 
Um, A through J last name would be Mr. Chambliss. And then K through Z, see, I gotta say my alphabet in that way. K through Z, then is that's Miss Tice. And you would do the same thing. You can send them Canvas messages or check in with Ms. V and ask them if you could see Ms. V or ask Ms. V if you can see them, excuse me. And, or you can um, go on the Counseling Canvas page. Thanks. You're welcome. Hey, this says I'm in seventh grade and have been having math in the cafeteria. Will it still be there? So I'm assuming that you are in Mr. Pringle or Ms. Harris's class. And no, the answer is no, you will no longer be in the cafeteria. You will be in this new building and you have a space to go to. And it's, it's a really cool space. It's in the orange wing. So I'm going to give you guys a little preview. If, since you showed up at this webinar, if you're a student, you're going to get Dr. Geiger's way to remember how this building works. All the high school teachers think I'm silly, but here's how it is, okay? So there are three different color wings in this building. There's a blue wing. They face north. When I think north, I think up like the sky. And it's blue. So blue goes up for me, and that goes north. Um, the green wings, there are green wings, they face east toward Depot Park where there's a lot of green space. There's also Eastside High School over there where I graduated from, go Rams. Every time I say that, people roll their eyes. But nevertheless, um, Eastside is toward the east and I think green when I think Eastside. There is one orange wing and it belongs to middle school and it faces south toward the gym and it faces south where the orange juice comes from. So South Florida, orange trees. So um, if you are a seventh grade math student, you are going to be in that orange wing on the second floor, middle schools in the middle on the second floor. So you can look forward to not being in the cafeteria for math. You can look forward to being in the orange wing, okay? This says, what if a student has first period Florida virtual class from home? Will they see the link in Canvas for the video and orientation other PKY students will see from home? That is a really good question. We hadn't thought about Florida virtual students doing that at home. Ms. Gabbard, do you have a creative idea for what we could do with those students tomorrow? Yeah, Dr. Geiger, I think this is something that we can follow up with the counseling team on and see about pushing out that link into the counseling page or other um, pages that are accessible to all of our middle and high school students. So if anyone um, has a course assignment, dual enrollment or Florida virtual school or something other than a more traditional on-campus first period, they would still have the benefit of seeing that virtual tour. Perfect, so I'm writing myself a little note and you and I can remember to get that done. Great question. Thank you for thinking about that. With teachers that are off campus, will we still attend their class in the cafeteria? So right now, Ty, nobody will have class in the cafeteria. Um, as I said, a couple of middle school classes have been moved um, into the orange math wing or the orange wing for middle school on the second floor. Um, most teachers who are off campus, their students will go to the first floor commons. And that's the wide open space. Dr. Hayes showed you a picture of a three story. It said PK Young. There were some beautiful green and blue glass windows. That area is called the commons. That's also where that, um, that circulation desk that she just talked about is. Um, so check the, check the windows of the cafeteria in the morning for your first period where you should go. And then after that, we'll make sure that you get to the right place. But basically we are using the commons area instead of the cafeteria for most of those classes that uh, were meeting in the cafeteria last, last semester. How are we sitting during lunch? Are we spaced apart is the next question. So yes, we try our best to encourage students to space themselves apart, especially because that's the only time we're not wearing masks when we're eating. Um, but you do not have assigned seats during lunch. It's really going to be up to you to make sure that you, you know, 
physically distance as much as you can. We have ample seating. We added a lot more tables over the summer to make sure that we have plenty of places to sit. So I would encourage you just to spread out and make sure that you're keeping yourself safe. Who do we need to notify if we wanted to switch on and off campus? Would we have the option to do, for example, Monday, Tuesday on campus and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off campus? So the first, I can answer the first part of that question first. Um, if you want to switch from on to off or off to on, you would send an email to main office at pky.ufl.edu. Um, we are strongly encouraging people not to do what sounds like a hybrid kind of schedule where they're on campus some days and off campus some days, but that seems like something that we would need to talk about with someone personally. So I'm going to ask you to reach out to Dr. Hill. Is that okay, Ashley, for me to point them in the direction of your email? Yep. If your family needs something really specific like that, um, we can do our best to accommodate that, but that would need to be facilitated through Dr. Hill's office. And Ashley, your address is a hill, a h i l l at pky.ufl.edu. Hey, I don't know if I heard right, but do we get free lunch? Yes, we get free lunch and free breakfast. Anybody who wants it. So take advantage of that. And um, Ms. Kavanaugh is so excited to be able to provide that for our students. And so, that's true, Dr. Geiger, for um, off-campus families as well. There's curbside pickup uh, for off-campus families too. So don't forget that if you are an off-campus learner. Absolutely. If I have a kid that needs to stay home to monitor symptoms that would not otherwise keep them out of school, can they join virtual class that day? Uh, Sarah, that depends on the grade level of the student. So middle and high school, that's absolutely super easy. Elementary, it gets a little trickier because they don't all have devices at home. So that would be something that would be um, worked out through the elementary learning community leader if it's an elementary student. But definitely, if your child is showing any kind of symptoms, any kind of illness we do want to we do want them to remain home and we'll do everything we can to make sure that they continue with their learning while they're at home and waverly just asked me about classes in the cafeteria i think she heard the answer to that earlier i'm just i'm not moving fast enough i think are there outdoor learning spaces um i'm going to let dr hayes talk about this because i know there's been a lot of work underway around outdoor learning spaces so there are lots of plans for um, designing and installing some new outdoor learning spaces. One of the things that's very exciting about the future for this campus is we will have so much more outdoor space available to us than we have had um, in the past 10 to 20 years, 20 years now. Um, so we have a group of faculty, a group of students, and a Fulbright scholar uh, who plans to return um, to our campus next year from Japan, who specializes in working with students and faculty to design outdoor learning spaces. And we're gonna make um, fundraising uh, to, to help support the installation of some of the new ideas for outdoor learning spaces, a part of our fundraising plans for the rest of the school year. Thank you. Will it be the same if your first period teacher is teaching from home? I'm not really sure what the same means, but if your first period teacher is teaching from home, you might be with Mr. Cunningham to take you on the tour and see all of those things. So we will try to make sure that if your first period teacher is teaching from home and you are here on campus, um, you still get to do all of the things that the, kid, the other kids on campus get to do. Do students need to sign up for aftercare or can they just go to the study hall in the cafeteria until 4 p.m.? Um, that is available every day until 4 and you do not need to sign up. For 6th through 12th grade only. 6th oh. through 12th grade, correct. Which is this audience. Right. Um, I have been online until now. I would like to know how lunch will go when eating relating to masks. Do we sit with a certain amount of people per table? Um, we ask that only four people sit at the blue uh, metal picnic tables. You take off your mask to eat, of course, and then you put your mask back on when you're finished. The nice thing is that we're outside for the most part. 
There are indoor spaces and we've asked people to spread out on in the inside if you're choosing to eat in there, but we're encouraging people as long as the weather is nice to eat outside and to put your masks on as soon as you finish eating. Will secondary students be attending all of their classes in the new building or still be in older campus buildings depending on their class? Ms. Gabbard, do you wanna go with this one? You're looking bored, I wanna keep you awake. <laughs> sure. I'm happy to answer that. Um, so while there are many classes that will be held in the new secondary building, we do have other buildings on campus where secondary classes will be scheduled. So your art classes, um, engineering classes, um, the digital design program, those are all programs that will continue to be accessed outside of um, the building. Your physical education classes um, are likely to still be accessed and scheduled. Um, as you all know, sometimes on the field, sometimes in the gym, you're dressing out in the locker room. So we are still um, making use of and having classes in our other buildings um, outside of the new building. So in Spanish, sure. Spanish. Yeah, and, and absolutely. So our world languages program um, will still be outside of the building. We'll move from the portables up to L-Wing. Um, I didn't name an exhaustive list, right? Um, but the room locations are going to be listed on your schedule and you'll get your schedule from your first period teacher. Um, so, and there'll be lots of people to help you find all of your classes. So while there have been lots of classes moving to different buildings, some classes have stayed in the same spots as well. And I want to speak to that real quickly. So the classrooms where we will continue to have um, sixth through 12th grade courses that are not inside this new building, they are located in buildings that are relatively new to our campus. Awesome. Okay, I'm trying to type a couple of answers because I'm looking at the clock and I see that we're getting close. Um, do high school students eat lunch inside or outside? That's their choice. Um, and middle school, it's their choice as well. Are all teachers coming back? So um, we do have a few teachers who will be still teaching remotely, um, but for the most part, um, most of your teachers will be here. The majority of our teachers are gonna be back and they have been, they've been working really hard to get your space ready for you. Will students get a map tomorrow or are maps available on the website? They will not be getting maps and we don't publish maps on our website for safety purposes. Um, but I think once you get in this building and you remember my blue sky and my green depot park and my orange juice pointing south, um, you're gonna figure it out pretty quickly. Trust me, I think, um, I think it's, it's a pretty easily navigable building. And do the doors lock after class starts like the elementary buildings? Great question, and yes, they do. Um, this building has some great safety features, um, including doors that will lock, and then there is a buzzer system with the video uh, that yeah. will buzz yeah. students in. Uh, Ms. B can see who you are and can buzz you in through the door. So the doors will lock. Um, and Dr. Liger, there are a couple of questions in the chat about safety mm -hmm. in the new building. Um, and so I think like you addressed the building itself. And I think too, we've changed some procedures around coming onto campus during the school day too. And that's a sort of a shift in another level in um, safety on the campus. And so families, when you come during the school day will be required to check in at the gate um, with your state issued ID, if you plan to get out of your vehicle. Um, and so that's that's just another sort of angle to the to the safety question. Yeah, so typically you used to come into the front office and Miss V or someone behind the desk would take your license and would give you the yellow sticker. That will actually happen at the guard gate now. And so um, that's that's just one step we're taking again to be as safe as we possibly can. Um, our classes assigned to certain tables at lunch. Nope, not anymore. Um, do you know where the PSAT test is taking place? Ms. Gabbard, can you answer that? Yes, our um, testing is going to be over at the Rights Union. And so there's more information depending on which group you're in. Um, you should have information via email from Ms. Tillett uh, that tells you exactly what the procedure is for um, making your way to the Rights Union for that PSAT test that's happening 
um, next week. And if you need more information about the PSAT, please reach out directly to Lisa Tillett, who is our Director of Testing and Accountability. Um, and Ms. Henderson can probably put um, Ms. Tillett's email in the chat. If you have PSAT questions, she'll be happy to answer those directly. How many classrooms or rooms are in the new building? I'm gonna estimate at about 35, but I can't swear to that. And those are classrooms. It's about 29 and then um, many, probably um, 10 small group rooms in addition to the 29 more, what you would call a classroom learning space plus the learning commons. Awesome. Uh, what grades are on what floor? So middle school is on the middle floor, the second floor, the first floor and the third floor uh, have the high school classrooms. And so by high school on the first floor, uh, Christy, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's mainly uh, senior classes and maybe some social studies, high school social studies. And then on the third floor, you have ninth, 10th and 11th grade classes. Did I get that right? That's accurate, as well as um, if you're a senior, you're likely to have your mathematics upstairs on the third floor as well. Awesome. Uh, yes, we will still congregate around the cafeteria in the morning after you're screened and while you're waiting for school to begin. Um, you can hang out in the cafeteria area, eat that free breakfast. Um, what if the class I want is not available. Can I get a class through Florida Virtual? Do I have to choose another class from PK? That's a, a question for your counselor. Please do what um, Ms. Uh, Dr. Penny Packer Hill mentioned earlier, reaching out to the counselors. Are lockers being issued? We have no lockers at PK um, other than the ones in the gym and that's for safety purposes. And because uh, so much of our textbook um, so many of our textbooks are now on our computers that we don't we don't really have a need for having lockers on campus as much anymore. I'll be home till Friday. What about my tour? So make sure that you check in with your first period teacher and she will make sure that you can see that virtual tour with the counselors. I did that one and that one. Uh, what percentage of students are back on campus, elementary, middle and high school? That is a great question and I haven't done the math today. Um, elementary last semester was about 50-50 and I would say that it's um, going to increase for second semester. Um, I, I'm afraid to give you an estimate because I'm afraid it's gonna be wrong. For middle and high school, <coughs> I would say um, we were more like 40% on campus, 60% off. And I think we're gonna be closer to flipping that. I think we might have about 60, 40, but that's a great question. And I will get an answer and actually give a correct answer, a detailed exact answer, um, communicate that out somehow to you guys. That's a really good question. <coughs> there is an elevator in the building, um, but that elevator is going to be reserved for faculty and staff or students with a note from the nurse. So you will mostly use the stairs, not the elevator, unless you have a medical need for using the elevator. And then if you need to, to use it, the nurse will give you a pass. Um, but otherwise we're gonna, we're gonna limit the use of the elevator. Saves energy to use the stairs and it's healthier for your bodies. So we're gonna try to use the stairs as much as we can. Julie, do you see any other questions that I missed? Just a, a couple in the chat. Um... One of them, um, I think, was asked already, but we'll reiterate it, that if a student's not feeling well and they're being kept home, they can attend their classes online in middle and high school. Um, right. Other arrangements have to be made for elementary school students, um, and they won't be marked absent if they do attend the Zoom sessions while they're at home. Um, and then uh, there's a question about whether or not there are four periods tomorrow, and the answer to that is yes. Yes, all four periods. First period will be long, and then we've reduced the length of second, third, and fourth period to accommodate that extra long first period. Sorry, Dr. Geiger, there's another one that just is a point of clarification where um, a, a, a family member asked that when they informed um, that their um, student would not be on campus, 
or was switching their program that they needed to inform each teacher. From what I understand, that's, that's not accurate. They do not need to inform each teacher. Um, okay. They need to inform main office at pky.ufl.edu. And then we have one answer and the information is stored centrally. So then all the teachers are made aware of that student switch. Yeah, and actually we make a little tweak in Skyward that indicates to teachers whether a student is working um, on campus or off campus. So it starts with main office at PKY. Um, I'm, he I'm interested in hearing about security in the new building. Dr. Hayes, do you wanna talk about some of the features of security in the new building? Um, I'll talk, talk about them a bit in generalities and with some reassurance. So we're not gonna go through every explicit detail, but I will say a tremendous amount of planning and design went into the safety and security features of this building. So in addition to all the external doors um, always being secured and locked, um, we have different ways of managing access to the building by outsiders and monitoring that. Um, also, each learning community has a hard secure lock on it once the class period starts and those doors remain locked at all times. Within each learning community, there are ways to secure each of the learning spaces um, so that those can be um, locked and secured when, when needed. Um, and there are, there are lots of um, uh, monitoring systems in the building to make sure students are safe as well. Thank you. Julie, do you see anything left in the chat? No, I don't see anything left in the chat. Okay, and then there's a question about if a friend or family member needs to pick up my child who is a concealed carry permit holder, where would they need to pick up my child? Um, as long as, I mean, I would assume they would check in at the guardhouse with, um, Reggie, and then they would pick up their pick up your child as long as they are registered on your child Skyward, and we have permission um, for them to pick up your child. It sounds like this may need more detail and conversation. So I'm asking um, if you want to reach out to me an email, C Geiger at PKY, then I can maybe have you have a conversation with our SRO, um, Officer Belleville, and he can help us. Uh, solve your solve your question because it seems like there's a little more involved here. Can middle school school uh, can middle schoolers walk home without additional additional documentation? I have a newly returning sixth grader. As long as we have uh, pa parental permission for a student to walk home, and you feel uh, like your child can do that, then absolutely they certainly can. We would just like to have that notated in their Skyward information. So again, send something to main office at PKY and Sandra will make sure that gets added into their Skyward. We are out of time, but we're so grateful that you all joined us tonight. Um, we're super excited about tomorrow and can't wait to see children learning in this amazing new space. Thank you so much for being here and please feel free to follow up with any other questions by email Continue to look for all of Julie's wonderful communications on the website, our Facebook page, daily announcements, um, all of those phone calls and emails that we send out. Please keep reading them and listening to them. I know there are a lot, but we really want you to be as informed as possible. And so we will record this. And sorry. sorry, Dr. Geiger, we will record this webinar and post it on the um, and share it with secondary families as well. So if you have friends or um, other PK families who missed tonight but would like to be able to attend, we will post it uh, hopefully tomorrow. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Have a wonderful night.